Got another exam question on the practical skills topic. So this is an organic one, but it's difficult to classify, so I'm calling it a bit of everything. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so we'll make a start. So the first part of A, we need to draw this label diagram for distillation. So there's mine there. It doesn't have to be a work of art. Mine certainly isn't. Just got to contain the key features. So what have we got? We've got a flask, a heat source, a thermometer. So the bulb of the thermometer should be in line with the exit for the condenser. Obviously that's the condenser. Um, the water flow direction has to be correct. So it goes in, water goes in at the bottom of the condenser and it comes out at the top. And obviously a collection vessel here with your distillate in. And the other thing to point out is just make sure there's a seal across there because you don't want any vapours going out. You want them all to go through the condenser and into here. The second part of the question is we've got to talk about how we would isolate the cyclohexanone from the distillate. So you'll notice I've underlined or I've highlighted here the distillate is a mixture of cyclohexanone and water. So you can see I've modified my distillate now to factor in which layer is which. So we've got some density information. Cyclohexanone has a density of 0.948, which is lower than the density of water, which has a density of 1. So water will be your lower layer, and cyclohexanone will be your upper layer. So what we need to do now is transfer this into a separating funnel. We then need to run out the two layers and collect the upper organic layer, which is the cyclohexanone. Now there's always small traces of water in the um, organic layer, so you would add a drying agent to absorb that. And it's always a good idea to give an example, and the one I always use is anhydrous calcium chloride. And then finally you would filter that and then redistill and collect the fraction that boils off at 156 degrees C. So that's the boiling point of cyclohexanone. Part B suggests how you could tell when the excess dichromate is completely reacted with the ethane dioxide acid. Well, you can see that one of the products is a gas, carbon dioxide, so you would see that the fizzing has stopped. Moving on to part C, so to help me explain this one, I've drawn up some TLC plates. So let's suppose this is um, a TLC plate for pure cyclohexanol, so it gives a spot there. Pure cyclohexanone gives a spot there. So as we're doing this reaction, if we've got both substances present, we're going to have two spots. So what we could do is we could take samples out of the reaction mixture at regular intervals, run the TLC plate for the sample. So let's suppose we've got that there. So you can see we've got both substances present because we're comparing them to those. So we know that the reaction's not complete yet. And then there'll come a point where we only have a spot for the product, the cyclohexanone, and that's when we'll know that the reaction is complete. And for the final part of the question, we've got to plan this experiment that would allow the student to confirm the identity of the pure organic product. Remember, this is cyclohexanone, which is a carbonyl. So what we'd do is add 2,4-DNP, or Brady's reagent, to the product. That would give us an orange precipitate, which we would then need to recrystallize to purify it. We'd then measure the melting point of the precipitate and compare it to known data values. 